Please podcast. We're so excited to be back for another episode. I have my girlies with me. Hi, it's Natha. Hi, it's Amanda. And we just finished up The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I swear this book has sparked so much conversation. Um, we were asking each other too, like it has to do with soulmates and lovers and things like that. Like, I want to know your take, you guys. Like, what do you think about soulmates? Ask me when I'm in a relationship in different stages of my life. (laughs) No, but do you believe in them? I feel like even, you know, even single, I had my same thoughts about it. I think soulmates can come in different forms. It could be a friend. It could be like a bond between like a mother and a daughter. It could be a relationship. I don't know. I used to believe in them. I used like when I thought I found like my perfect match, I'm like, oh my God, my soulmate. But... (laughs) But then I I think you learn kind of why they're not, right? Like as time goes on. Mm -hmm. And I totally agree with that. I think that soulmates come in many forms. I don't think people have just one. I definitely think my mom and I are soulmates. I think that the idea of us, I mean, I think that you only have one twin flame. And the difference in the concept of a twin flame is that you're one soul that's sort of split in two. So it's like this undeniably like, powerful connection, which which can also be like overwhelming and somewhat toxic, they say, but that those people also have like a difficult time, like functioning without each other. And I think that is like your like number one, like most passionate um, lover. But I think that that's strictly like your person, not Mm -hmm. other relationships. I think soulmates do come in many forms and can be friends. And I think that these people sort of like are coming to your life and have been like present in even if you believe in like past lives and stuff like that. Like I tell my mom all the time, like I was your mom in a previous life. Like I feel like these souls are around you always and they can come in different forms. Like whether you and your mom were sisters and at one point or something like that. And like, I think we've both convinced ourselves like I, that I definitely have been her mom and I do mother her and like, we can feel it. And we almost like joke, like we know, this go- <laughs> we know you've never heard of that, that you know, I've heard of it, but I don't believe it. We totally, <laughs> we know, we already know, like shout out mommy. Like we know I was your mom. But I also believe, I do believe totally in soulmates. I believe some of my friends and closest people are my soulmates. And I think that I've also um, like read some books on it and that, you know, in a romantic partner, sometimes you don't always recognize your soulmate or one recognizes the person before the other. And it can be extremely painful for the person who's like drawn to that to the other person and they don't recognize them yet and it takes a little longer so there was a quote have you guys watched sex in the city the yeah movie? the show no though okay so there's a quote from sex in the city and it's something about soulmates and the four of the girls being soulmates and it just sparked something in my mind right now if you had to choose a character from sex in the city which one would you be Oh, the one that laid on the table with sushi on her. What's her name? Oh, you are Samantha all the way. That's for I sure. Samantha. I am dead. I'm Charlotte. I'm Charlotte for See, sure. See, this is hard for me because, like, I guess, I don't know. Like, I guess being a journalist, should I, can I just take that out and <laughs> be Carrie? I don't know. But I don't know that I feel like I that see way. you more as a Miranda. Ew. <laughs> she goes, ew. What about Miranda, girl? Go ahead. No, 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 no. I said that because I need. No, I gotta go like, look up oh Miranda. Yeah, See, look I, up who Miranda is and let me know. Your I thoughts. would have said between like Charlotte and Carrie, like something in the middle. I can't pick one of them, and I don't know them well enough. I love Charlotte. Yeah, she's <laughs> cute. Yeah. Ah, oh, so that just hit my mind when we were talking about soulmates. So you thought of that, and the first thing I thought of when she was talking about soulmates was twilight (laughs) because (laughs) because you know how like the wolves like imprint on someone and that's kind of like their soulmate so i was you know that i was like really amanda that's like but that's like one of the first books i've ever read as a teen so like that's why it was fresh in my mind too wait did you read the entire saga the entire like i was me too and And first in line at the theaters 
I Ugh. didn't. See, the movie, like, I wasn't that excited because I loved the book so much and I knew the movie would not amount to it. Like, I just knew and I didn't want to be disappointed. So I took my time watching the movie. <laughs> How about the Harry Potter saga? Oh, amazing. Oh, you wa you read every single book? Oh, no, I watched the movies, but I love oh. the movies. <laughs> okay. Have you read the books? No. <laughs> That's so hard. I feel like a no. lot of us did it. No. I did not read them, but I did watch. I did watch. Huge yeah. fan. My cousin made me sit down and like watch every single one. And I was like, because I was like almost 30 years old. And she's like, you never seen them? And I'm like, I've seen the first one. And she was like, okay, we're doing this for the next two days. Like, and then we did. <laughs> when I think of our childhoods, I would think Twilight, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. That's what our generation was really known for. Yeah, Vampire Diaries. Vampire Diaries, yes. Pretty Little Liars. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Sorry, we're deviating from their okay. soulmates. Okay, I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys my thoughts on soulmates. Um, Please. Okay. So I kind of agree with both of you. Said that you can have a soulmate friend. Like I definitely have friends that I'm just like, you're literally my sister. Like we just didn't come from the same person, but like you're my person. Um, and when it comes to soulmates with love, I might be salty too because I haven't found mine. Yet. <laughs> But I do, I do think there is someone for everyone, and I don't think that I don't think that means soulmate. I think some relationships take time to build. Like it's not like, like even finding a soulmate. I don't think it should be easy. You know, I think it should be working together to like build this love. But have like, you love heard of sight. the? Yeah, have you heard of the quote? You get three real ones throughout your lifetime. Like you get three true, real, authentic loves. I think it's like you have three three different types of love is what it is. Not think about my past now. <laughs> but I think that, but here's the thing. I know it's sour and it's a sad topic, but at the same time, I think that's what makes it so special. Like I, I mean, I feel that way too. Like the majority of my twenties, I did, was not with anyone. And I watched my friends in and out of relationships all the time and things like that. And I was never somebody who like brought somebody home or like, was very like no one was like at my Christmas table. I think my family met like one other person ever. And it that is what makes it so special. Like you it's not something that you find every day. And when you feel like this pull with this person and like you feel like you have a real like team, like there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And it's not the timelines and the and the way that things are and the pressure makes things different now. But I think that everything happens the way that it's supposed to. And when you mm -hmm. do like move away from certain people, there were people in my life that I used to just like cry over and you act like it's the end of the world. And then oh. you realize that afterwards, like you're like, oh my God, what was I thinking? Or thank God I didn't end up with this person. Or when you re like when you see it in mm -hmm. hindsight, it's totally different. And then like who you evolve to be too, like I think it's so healthy for Learn everyone to, it. yeah, mm -hmm. to have that time to really date, get to know yourself, get to know what you like, get to know other people. And then that way, you know, when it's the right fit for you later on. Like, I definitely would never regret having those years to really know what I like and want mm -hmm. in a partner. So... I thought my life was over when my high school sweetheart broke up with me. I was like, where do I go from here? Am I like, what? <laughs> It's so funny when you reflect and you look it's back. So funny. In yeah. my early 20s, there was this guy that I was like crazy over. Crazy, mm -hmm. crazy, crazy, crazy. And it I want to say this was like seven years ago. And recently he's tried to reach out. Like, and I mean Always reach happens. out at, at like pulling all the stops. And I cringe when I see his name. I'm like, oh, I wouldn't, I go back to that time, like of the crying and being the upset crying. and oh my God, my life will never go on. Like, how mm -hmm. can I be without this person? It takes time. It takes years. Like everybody's different. Some people can just one month and they're with somebody else. They're, all, you know, mm -hmm gone and off. Some people take years. Some, it just, when the time is right, you will heal from it. Yes. And I want to say our young listeners, if you're listening, if that man broke up with you, you broke up with that man, you will be all right. Just move on. Don't cry about it. Like literally you cry about it. And what does it do? Nothing. You wake up and you're like, okay, well, I got to keep, you know, going like it'll be okay. But you know how easier <laughs> that is to say I know. And then when you're in the moment, because everybody goes through things differently. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, everybody processes pain differently. So I just somebody want to shake myself. <laughs> I know. No, I know. This is what I always say. Like, if you think about it, you can have that pull and that feeling and it sucks and it's painful and you can want it to work out no matter what. Deep down, you always know, like, this thing wasn't right or that thing bothered. Like, when you're always, like, confused or, like, trying to make it work or trying to put the pieces together, like, you realize, you know deep down, like, these aren't the things that you were meant to have. But I always say that, like, think about when you're young and you're you know, as a a young girl, like if you were like me and you dream about one day, like you're going to have your dream person and your wedding and your family. And when you think about it, you didn't go through all of the things that you went through in your life and like growing up, picturing this thing for it to be that situation that has you crying, confused, Mm -hmm. upset, like you it's not worth it at the end of the day and you'll be thankful later. And when things end and like somebody is the way that they are, when you learn their true colors, just say thank you that that wasn't the rest of your life. And I I feel like everyone, you know, when those things happen, it just makes room for what- For someone better. For Mm -hmm. who you're supposed to be with in the end. As painful as it is, it makes sense later. And the people that stick through and make anything work end up in- tough situations later on maybe split up and the people who waited a little longer are perhaps the happiest is what I've seen so Hmm. there's no rush do you think Evelyn Hugo dropping into the book had a soulmate (laughs) okay this is what made me think about this conversation so I will say yes I do think um and if you want I could read quickly I have like some characteristics of soulmates just because I want, I'll relate to like Evelyn. Lay it on us. But this yeah. is what, these Please. are 10, 10 easy ways to recognize soulmate energy. Okay, so one, soulmates bring out the best in each other. A soulmate brings out the best in you and will encourage your personal and professional growth. They'll help you overcome challenges and celebrate your accomplishments. Two, you feel at home when you're with them. When you meet your soulmate, you may feel like you can be yourself and let your guard down when you're together. Three, your soulmate challenges. A soulmate should love and accept you for who you are and challenge and inspire you to be the best version of yourself. Love that one. Four, you can read your soulmate's mind. I find this is so true. You know when you're with like your person and you guys start to say the same things or you even know how they're like how they would react like. You may find that communication comes easily and naturally with your soulmates. Some people might even say they can read each other's minds. Five, they don't try to change you. Your soulmate accepts and supports you for who you are without trying to change or manipulate you into being someone you're not. Six, be on the lookout for friendship energy. Recognizing your soulmate isn't always straightforward, but friendship is essential in romantic relationships as it provides a foundation of trust, respect, and shared values. Literally, totally agree with this one. Like, your partnership. I mean, who are the experts? This is marriage.com. Cite them. (laughs) Yeah, who are the experts? This is marriage.com. Okay. I was going to say that at the end, but I'll I'll shout out out marriage.com right now. My rebuttal with that is the French feel No, no, no. You might feel all those things towards someone, but that doesn't mean that person. It takes two to tango, you know? So you might feel like somebody's your soulmate because of all those things you listed. But they would have to feel the same way. Same way. Of course. Right. But you're going to not feel good if they don't feel the same way. You'll know. You know what I mean? Like, you have to feel that bond together. Like, that und- undeniable bond that you can say that you have with your mom, with your best friend, with whoever. You don't, you're not confused every day when you're talking to these people in your life. You know that they're there Where for you. you. And you, mm-hmm. you know, there's a feeling of like when you wake up and you have like this pit and there's a feeling when you wake up content and you feel good and you're sure, you know what I mean? Like that's, I think the difference. Hmm. Um, I'll just read off the last few. Soulmates accept each other's differences. Sparks fly when you meet your soulmate. I would say that one's debatable. Definitely because debatable, sometimes especially if you start off as friendships. Yeah. yeah, like maybe you feel a pull in some way or some reason that makes you go back, but I don't necessarily think that like a lot of people say this, like they know in the first second. I don't always know that that's true. Mm-hmm. What do you think? I agree. You know how many times I thought in the first second? <laughs> <laughs> well, that could also be just like a fatuation. 
And then another one is like, there's a magnetic connection and soulmates admit when they are wrong. But that's all the communication stuff. This is my take on Evelyn Hugo. I think Celia, of course, was her romantic person. Even she kept saying too, like she didn't have any other women that she was interested in. It was like that soul connection to Celia specifically. Like Mm -hmm. she was even torn with like labeling herself as a certain way. Like she wasn't a lesbian. Yes, she was bisexual for her interest in a woman, but she was like, she doesn't go for women. She She liked men. And she loved Celia. And I think that that was like beyond the physical for her. It was her soulmate for sure. But I think Harry, her best friend, was also 100% her soulmate. And poor Harry. We need to talk about it. Let's dive into this book. We finished, what, chapters 51 until the end of the book. Mm -hmm. And our, our... loving Harry, who was her rock through everything. See, that's what it is. Like that undeniable, like person that is there through ride it all. Or die. Every they were, up like, and ride down, or die. no yeah. judgment. They had a kid together. This mm-hmm. person was meant to be in her life. He brought her Connor. He brought her so much. And Harry died. I cried when I read Me that. I was too. like, oh, I was like, and then he dies with his lover. I was just like, uh, and then Wait, what? did she move Harry's body or the lover's body? The lover into the driver's seat. So, so it looks like he was drinking and driving and got into the axe and Harry was never there. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was some, and that comes back to us, but oh my goodness. And the last conversation they had too, it was like they were deciding where to move and she wanted to, you know, be in love and go to another country. I know that was a lot too, to put on Harry, really. I mean, finally, Harry found somebody else. He was in mourning for so long from John. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy. It's like he finally found someone and then this happens. But it was tough too that, here's the thing. It was a beautiful thing that she realized like none of this matters. Let's go live a quaint little life overseas where no one really knows us. You can finally be with Celia. And it's a lot to put on Harry. We're going to get into Celia in a second because I can't even, but it's a lot to put on Harry to be like, oh, let's move to Spain. Like you have a child, you have a life. And they're still working. Yeah. And he still was sitting there like trying to figure out like, let's make this work or whatever it was. What a soulmate. Like, I just can't. This wire is in my hair. Yeah, they were. What about Celia? 100% soulmates. (sighs) So finally, they come back together. I was so happy they had. They spent ten years together. We were waiting for this. We mm-hmm. weren't sure if it would ever happen. And to be honest, did Evelyn fully deserve it? No. One of the things that they did share too that like they were mad, or that Evelyn shared that she was just mad that they wasted all this time. Mm-hmm. Celia drops a bomb on her that and it was interesting it was interesting because there was a planted seed at first when they went to a dinner this is like their first meetup they were communicating through letters for a while and finally they meet up and Evelyn orders a drink that per usual and Celia says, yeah, I can't, I, you know, my body doesn't take it like it used to, like something's off, like her tolerance is low and she was fairly young. She still was not like, what she's like in the she middle died of her, at like 60. 61. Yeah. She was like 50 mm-hmm. years old. Like, it's not like she was, you know, whatever. So that was like a little off. Like, what did is you the guys reason? see that coming? I, I knew when they were on the phone talking and she was very hesitant to meet up with her. Like she was like, literally, I want to be with you. I will leave my husband. And she was like, Oh, I don't know. Like I was like, she's, she's dying. I, I know didn't it. think that. I thought that. I was like, otherwise, because she, you could tell she felt the same through the letters. And I was like, she's literally saying like, let's do this. And you're hesitant. Something's wrong with you. So I knew it. I didn't think that. I just thought it was like you're signing yourself up for the same circus every time and you mm-hmm. just keep getting hurt. That's That was my take on it. Like that's mm-hmm. how I would feel. I'd be like over it. Like how many times am I going to fall for it and then be shattered? So I thought it was a layer of protection. I can uh, see that. Mm-hmm. But good eye. What about you, Natha? Did you think anything? No. The only thing that I was saddened by was when Connor, the daughter, died of cancer, too, because I feel from what I've heard, like the biggest pain for a parent is to bury their child. Like there's no 
I mean, if if it was more painful for of Cecilia's passing to her, then I mean that's her character. Of but course, I have heard that like your child is the worst pain that you can imagine bearing. No, yeah, she I, mentions that as well. She says, you know, like, mm, oh, sorry, no, that I, it ran in the family. So you know, she ended up having breast cancer too. But like your kid to go before you is just. No. There's no way to even fathom that kind of pain. And it's just everything that unraveled in this, at the end of this book, I was sobbing. So we lost Harry. Mm -hmm. Then we find out they're finally together. Celia has emphysema. And then they they do get their little life in Spain. They get their happy story Mm -hmm. and they make it work. And and yes, it was 10 years, but you know, it was something better than nothing. Agreed. Very Mm -hmm. sad. And it was like, you wasted so much time. It is a huge lesson for Evelyn. Like, I feel like by the end of this, like she is done, she gets it, but she, you know, learned a little too late. It was all her own doing. Yeah. Yeah. And she had no legacy to leave to anyone. Like, that is so sad. She had all this huge story in her life and she died alone. It's Mm -hmm. shocking throughout all of this that they were able to manipulate the press like for years and years and years and control the story that always goes out super talented i mean that's kind of how hollywood is now like the kardashians and all of them like they they pay people off in the press like they decide what story goes out there and what's released and what isn't released well it's it's a it's not about even what goes out there it's about what it gets hidden and i and you could get like in like even unfortunately a lot of them have to just like have NDAs for like anyone who enters their home or goes to dinner with them or is in their life like you and it is it's a you need some sort of privacy like could you imagine if everyone was after every little detail yeah but they definitely control the press too you know that though right I'm just saying that I think that it's a sad reality that like you everything in your life could come out and especially at a time like this like in terms of the book that wasn't accepting like I get why people were being killed just for being gay you know so it's it's a big thing to come out at a time like that and their career was being ruined they compared it to someone else's career right but I I also think it was so extreme the lengths of like having to marry someone every time like there's a line yeah (laughs) she could have she could have easily walked away from the fame and the money and the glory if she really loved her that much they could have been like let's go to Spain let's run away together I don't care about this but at the end she loved being this like sex symbol and in these movies and this popularity like that came first to her in my opinion yeah it's all she ever well it's all she ever knew like she just never could let it go like she just kept chasing this concept of herself of her life of her you know being the celebrity and it wasn't until the end where she was like no i don't care let's just do it and it's like you could have had 30 years of this life and and i think that's when she was the happiest when it was you know it all came together but then you learn like it was too late yeah you know she I liked her relationship her. with Connor she told her everything which was you yeah. know I feel like it's so nice to like not have to lie to someone and to be honest with your own kid I thought was great at least I, Connor like passed knowing her mom was fully authentically happy in herself yeah and could like teach her too like from her mistakes as well like that's the best gift that you can offer is like you've gone through this and now later on you know, you can pass down like something to your child so that they don't make the same mistakes you did. Like the material stuff is not worth it. And in my opinion, chasing money is not better than being just happy and fulfilled and content in a, in a more comfortable life where maybe you don't have billions at your disposal, but you're happy. You have your little family. Like that's mm-hmm. what's important at the end of the day. And that's we what she that. said too. Like her number one thing was like, family above all else and at the end of the day she lost everyone because she was just so about herself and like this image and just chasing that fame and then her overdosing at the end i Wait, know i, I was knew. most surprised that monique wasn't her daughter oh like, yes who she her was father was her. yeah <gasps> you know what i started to think about it and i was like how could it be that 
she because she had such a relationship with her family that it's not like she ever said like oh i'm adopted or anything like that so i was like hmm like i knew yeah. she was some kind of link but then it just all i thought it was sense. celia's link yes yes um but then she never wanted kids so it was just I don't know. It did come together though. Cause I started getting like, at first we were so sure. And then I was like, I don't know, this is too far fetched. Like she, she has such a close relationship with her mother. And then it ended up being that her father was Harry's lover. And how sad is that, that she had her whole life mm -hmm. thinking, growing up, thinking that her father died in a drunk driving accident. Like that is just and he was going to leave Harry. So like now, like say he, they didn't die and he did leave Harry for his family, which would, which is what he was going to do. Then would they have like moved to Spain and would Harry have went? Like, I'm just curious what would have happened. Well, he wasn't going to leave Harry. Like Harry was almost trying to leave him. He's like, come with us. And it's like, I can't uproot my family, my family. Mm -hmm. you know, to go to Spain. I have, and, and that was so, go. that was mm -hmm. such still a beautiful piece that it was like, he's still, it was enough for him to like, my daughter needs me. I love my daughter. And once again, like his wife, while unconventional, they had so much love they were in so their nice. own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you would think this information would like go down like a bag of bricks, but she got over it in like five minutes. She, oh yeah. I wouldn't say she, I mean, I get she it. She didn't even tell her mom. I mean, she I was would, so over Okay. It. Would you tell? Of course I would tell my I mother. would tell my mom. I think she deserves to know. She spent her whole I life with this man. I would tell my mother immediately. Also, same. I just can't keep anything from my mom. But yeah, same. Oh yeah. my God, yeah. what I have to tell. That is like a huge thing to know. And it's while very sad, like, it's it she what knew she thought i think the mom legacy knew. the mom must really? have known she even said they didn't have a sexual oh, relationship oh so I she knew 100 percent think that the mother thought that her husband may have been gay that yeah, is not 100 percent. but yeah. I, but the piece about knowing that he wasn't some drunk driver is important. Is it, mm -hmm. Like his legacy was tarnished. Like he just irresponsibly like left his child behind. That's a huge difference in the story. So then Evelyn dies of a overdose. Yeah, she was done. She she I did everything knew. she had to do. Yeah, her she was. And at I peace. do. I like how Monique just finally dedicated the book to saying it was Cecilia was being dedicated to the love of Evelyn's life. Life. Yeah. She wanted, yeah. Evelyn wanted that. She wanted everyone to know that she wants the book to be about Cecilia, not about her. Yeah. yeah she mentioned that comes that. hard. <laughs> that would be hard to believe after reading the book. <laughs> I think it's just, she reflected and she's like, I did it all wrong. And this is the, these are the cards I was dealt for. This is everything that happened. Like she kind of deserved. And now she's like sitting alone and those are her consequences and she's done. Like she's ready to go. Mm -hmm. I knew for a long time that she had planned to go. Like I knew that I she had that. planned it 5,000%. There were so many things about like a timeline and, and even when they were talking about the photo shoot, like she's like, oh, it would be this Friday. So like that was three days away. And then she was so sure Evelyn telling Monique like, oh no, we'll be done by then. Like she just knew she had it all planned out. She had the mm. nanny going on vacation. I was like, oh, that's it. Like, and the nanny was like, wait a minute. I thought Monique was going to be here with or the housekeeper. I should say. Yeah, it was the like nanny. the nanny. Not the, the nanny. nanny. The housekeeper Brain was Brian. saying like she had her, <laughs> she had her like plan to go away. She set her up. And I think she was just tying up loose ends. She got Monique, you know, because of what. But Monique, she caught on. She knew she was going to. Like yes. Off herself. Would you, do you think off she was herself. messed up? Do you, do you think she was messed up to like not stop her? Would you have no. stopped her? I think she was just like at this She didn't point, know her that well enough to stop her or not stop her. 
at I this mean, point, she like respected her enough to be like, you know what? Like, this is your final decision. I know you're in your right mind. And it's like, okay, she stops her now. So then it's not like she's not going to do it again. I think like everyone knew this is what was going to happen. And what is she really going to do? I'm such an empath. I would not be able to sleep at night. I'd be like, I need to go stop her. I'd like, do sick. it when I don't think you're going to do I'd, it. Or I'd run because <laughs> she like went right to her mom and I'd go to, I'd be like, mom, what do we do? She's going to kill her. Herself. And then they're watching this whole movie of her the whole time. I'd be like, I know. She's My mom would be part. like, don't get involved. <laughs> it's if she told her mom about what happened, she'd probably be like, let her go. <laughs> oh how, old I, how old was she again when she died? Evelyn? I think she was like in her 70s. 70s? Yeah, 70s. I want to Wasn't say. Wasn't she mm-hmm. like late 70s too? It's like she's at the end of her life. She's made peace with everything and she tied up every loose end. And she had she, breast cancer. She t- mm-hmm. yeah, and she I'm had sorry. Cancer. She lived a fulfilling life though. No, I she mean, did. with everything said and done, like she was in all these movies, all these red carpets, met all these people, traveled. Like, yes, it was a mess of a life, but she lived it. So I guess in the end, you know, when she did pass away, like she was suffering the same fate as Connor and she knew it was inevitable. She tied up her loose ends and you could tell when she was talking to Grace and saying like, you deserve this and all this stuff. Like she was giving her final goodbye. She did the same with Monique. Monique gave her that knowing hug and it was like the end of a chapter. Like that was it for her. And and she said everything that she had to say. I, I couldn't imagine being the public given the gravity of how powerful Evelyn Hugo was in their lifetime to then have this book come out is just like unimaginable, like the raw Mm -hmm. truth. Um, I guess we can start with our ratings. Who wants to go first? I can go first. So I cried. So if I cry in a book, you already get a lot of points there. I thought it was well-written. I liked, um, everyone involved like and even with like now that you mentioned the whole soulmate thing it's beautiful to think about how many soulmates she did have you know besides her lover okay so what I'm getting at is I enjoyed the book and I would give it an eight the reason I wouldn't give it a 10 is because I'm I am a little more thriller and you know I feel like I mean Yes, it's sad. A lot of people died, but that also made it a little more realistic for me. Like if it was a happy ending and no one died, I wouldn't have liked it as much. So I did appreciate how realistic slash enjoyable it was. Yeah. Um, I'll piggyback off that. I was also going to give it an eight. I was like conflicted. Eight, 8.5. That was my, um, I don't, I wasn't sure which way to go. Um, I loved it. I think it was tragic. I think it was beautiful. I think it just like pulled at my heartstrings in many different ways. The struggles that she faced were very real, especially in that time and unfortunately still exists today. And I just think that it did a really good um, depiction of like things that people go through. I think that, you know, her story was beautiful and I think it was painful and I cried a lot. So yeah, I'll give it an eight. And there was a lot to learn from it as well, too. I feel like I reflected a lot. Yeah, and I think it was so layered. Like, even the the parts with Monique and her story, there were so many different mm-hmm. things throughout it that, like, wove through the book. And you didn't really know where it was going. So, you know, it just, like, at every turn, it, it kept my interest. And I never guessed to her, like how Monique yes. was involved. So I love a good book where I don't guess right. So totally. brownie points there. Yes. All right, Queen, your turn. Lay it on us. <laughs> Out of 10, it'll be a three for me. And I'll just leave it at that. Was, <laughs> yeah. it, my cup? It, was, was yeah. it my cup of tea? I wasn't fond of the plot. I wasn't fond of all the husbands and how selfish she was. And uh, I just really You're a thriller like this girl. one. Okay. You're a thriller yeah. through and through, and that's okay. Yes. <laughs> Even the endings yes. with all the tragedy, nothing? No. <laughs> no. You can't convince her to... <laughs> no, no, no. But speaking of thrillers, I'm super excited to read our next one. It's A Stranger in the House by Sherry LaPena. We're reading chapters 1 through 15. It's a domestic suspense novel. A New York Times bestseller, so... Cannot yeah. wait to get into this we one. Know we you haven't can. had a thriller in a while, though. When was the last time we read a thriller? The Housemaids. Oh, my God. It's been forever. No. <laughs> I thought we didn't do the um, family across the street. Oh. Uh, 
I forgot about that. that <laughs> I was thinking like the uh, one I liked. No, yeah. By the way, uh, we're reading one in our book club. Sometimes I lie by Alice Feeney. Highly, recommend, highly recommend you guys if you're looking for another juicy sh- thriller, since we won't be reading it for the pod. But sometimes I lie, just incredible. And I'm a love girly. So hopefully this, yeah. the thriller that we're about to read next, A Stranger in the House, Makes me feel the same way. Can't wait to get into it. Amanda, do you want to plug our socials, girly? Sure. Uh, Please follow us on Instagram, TikTok, X. (laughs) (laughs) Hold on. Elon, Elon, don't start over. Elon, look what you're doing. No, that one's different anyways. What do you want us to say? Okay, go ahead, girl. Okay. (laughs) TikTok. I would just say Twitter. Say Twitter, a.k.a. X. (laughs) We are on TikTok, Instagram, Threads, YouTube at Book Please Podcast. And then we're also on Twitter slash X at Book Please Pod. Watch us on YouTube. Go subscribe. Yes, please subscribe. Please. Bye. Ciao. Bye, guys.